If you have been playing Genshin Impact for a while, you might be almost complete with your main DPS artifact and moving on for your sub DPS artifact, and you might be tempted to build elemental mastery on your sub DPS. But today, we will use math and logic to explain why you should not do that. Before we dive into the video, I want to very quickly address something very important, and that is these numbers do not apply to anemo damage as a venti or electric type of reaction such as Fischl. The reason behind this is because both Anemo and Electric type of reaction scale off a static amount depending on the character level. So the only way to increase their damage on the reaction number is through Elemental Mastery and you should be building as much Elemental Mastery as possible on them. In order to demonstrate this, we're going to be using a level 1 Sacrificial Bow which a 44 base attack and a level 70 compound bow with a 347 base attack. In both cases, you can see that the Swarf damage does not change. It is both 1567 Swarf damage. With that being said, on your character such as your support facial or your support venti, you should definitely be pushing elemental mastery as much as possible. However, if you're playing main DPS, for example main DPS venti, you should be using attack percent instead, because then your talent will be scaling off your attack percent, for example your skyware sauna. Because of this in uh, high number scaling, attack percent is definitely going to result in a lot more damage. With that out of the way, let's talk about the main topic of today, which is going to be the vaporization or the melt type of reaction, which work differently than the electric charge or the enemy reaction. They work differently because not only they scale off the attack percent of the person reacting it, there's also an additional bonus depending on the order of operation that you apply them. For example, applying fire onto water will give you 1.5 times bonus, and applying water onto fire will give you 2 times bonuses. The main team I'm going to use to demonstrate all this math today is going to be the Pyro team, very, very popular with the Lukes, involving uh, the Luke, uh, Xing Chiu, and uh, Xiang Ling. To get started, Vaporize Reaction have an internal cooldown as you might already know. However, keep in mind that this internal cooldown is per ability source. And when I talk about sources, take a look at the talent screen of your character. So there's always free ability available to every single character. Your number attack, your elemental skill ability, and your elemental burst ability. And when I say source, I mean that these are different sources. So the uh, reaction applied from a normal attack will be different from the reaction applied using an elemental skill which is different from the reaction applied using an elemental burst. I'm going to demonstrate this using this clip right here. As you can see, we start attacking this Wahydro Slime by casting the loose elemental burst ability which triggers the vaporized reaction. And then we quickly quickly follow up with the normal attack from the Luke which again trigger another vaporized reaction. This is because the normal attack have a different cooldown than the elemental burst because they are a different source of fire and so they do not conflict with the cooldown of each other and so you can trigger vice vaporize consecutively. Uh, to demonstrate this again, we're going to quickly follow up with the elemental skill from the loot the searing onslaught. Once again, you can see that vaporize being triggered and this is because the searing onslaught is considered a brand new uh, source of fire so it does not conflict with your normal attack triggering it or the elemental burst triggering it. But do know that here, once we attack with the normal attack on the loot again, the vaporize did not trigger here. This is because the same source have a internal cooldown between them. So because we already triggered the vaporize using a normal attack from the loot just previously, and the cooldown of a normal attack source fire has not wear off yet, we cannot trigger a another vaporize using a normal attack. So the cooldown is shared between the same source but different for different sources. And this is true for different characters ability as well. Here you can see the Goba and the Deluxe have no conflict between having a vaporize reaction. Now why was the internal cooldown their important topic? Um, that is because elemental mastery is only as good as if you can constantly provide the reaction and triggering it. If you cannot do reaction damage then elemental mastery is completely pointless. However, in today's calculation we're actually going to assume that you can perfectly apply your elemental mastery every single attack. 
This is definitely possible for characters such as Xiangling who Gomba have an interval between them and her Pyronado have an interval between them. So with a very very consistent water source such as Xingqiu, you can actually uh, favorably assume that every single Xiangling attack can indeed trigger a vaporize reaction provided that you play well enough. We're gonna begin by raking up this rune guard and doing dump testing. Currently, my Duluk have the current start. 76 elementary mastery which increased the vaporize effect by 14.2% and I have a critical damage percent of 138.1%. Furthermore, I'm actually wearing the Grim Force and Crimson Witch artifact which furthermore increased the vaporize damage by 15%. By hitting this ring guard we can see that my first ring onslaught hit for 1921 damage and on the critical it hit for 4574 damage. Now, for vaporization, on a no critical string onslaught, it hit for 3724 damage. And for a critical vaporized string onslaught, it hit for 8867 damage. With all the previous in mind, we can easily figure out the formula for a critical damage vaporization, which is going to be your base damage multiplied by the vaporization bonus 1.5 in this case, multiplied by the critical damage that you have, which is 2.381 in this case multiplied by the elemental mastery that you have, which in this case is going to be 1.292. Feel free to pause the video and calculate this yourself to verify. Now that we have the damage formula precisely, we can figure out how to maximize our damage. This is a very simple maximization of volume problem which can be solved precisely if you know calculus. However, even if you don't know calculus, you might already know that the best way to maximize the volume of a cube or a high dimensional shape is simply to make every single side as even as possible. So with that being said, the best way to maximize your damage is to evenly distribute your elemental mastery, your crit damage and crit rate, and your attack percentage. Now what most people might be tempted to do is to stack elemental mastery as high as possible and their shouting support or something like that because they think that the reaction damage is really good or they think that elemental mastery is the support stat. But as it turned out, that's not the way. And very similar to all other DPS, you definitely want crit rate or crit damage on your headpiece. You want the elemental bonus on your goblet piece. Uh, this what we mean effectively is that the only place that you can choose whether to not have elemental mastery or attack or other stats is your hourglass piece. And so let's check it out with some math to see if that's the case. Uh, here we have a constellation zero level 80 Shang Link with a level 80 dragon bane weapon, which is currently providing us 201 elemental mastery. Uh, now moving on, uh, we have very standard uh, artifact set, so the pyro damage on the goblet, the crit damage on the uh, hat piece. So the piece that we're looking for in terms of comparison is going to be the our class piece in the middle. At level 20 our glass is going to give us 187 elemental mastery, meaning that we will get 276% damage bonus uh, when we do a vaporization. Uh, so let's take at Goba for example. At Goba is currently doing on a critical hit at 3480 damage. So with 384 damage multiplied by the vaporization bonus of 2.76, we're gonna get 9604.8 damage. Now let's see what happens if we switch this elemental mastery to attack percent instead. At plus 20 hourglass, it's gonna give us 46.6% uh, attack percent. So now uh, her base attack percent is higher. So the Goba, of course, can do more damage. However, it comes at the cost of the vaporize being lower, only at 240% now. But let's take a look at the calculation on the calculator on the right. So 2549 uh, critical damage followed by, by 2.4, which is the vaporize stage bonus. It's going to be 10k.917. Uh, so as you can see, Building attack percent on the Argos results in not only a higher vaporization damage on your Goba, and it's going to be the same for your Pyro Tornado as well. It also may it consist more consistent because you're also benefiting uh, from attack percent even though you're not having vaporization uh, reaction. And on the left, you're only getting that number if you're doing vaporize every single hit. Now over this video, I'm not to say not to build elemental mastery at all. Uh, be sure to have some elemental mastery if you don't have enough. But don't uh, make sure that you don't overbuild it. Don't go way too much hard on it. 
Uh, I recommend actually getting elemental mastery on your weapon. Uh, here for my Shangling, I'm using the Dragon Bane, uh, which is not only providing elemental mastery, but it also have an effect that increases the damage. Well, I haven't refined for right now, so it's increasing by 32%. Uh, the, why this effect is important is because in a vaporization calm, your enemy will either be affected by hydro or pyro because that is how you proc the vaporization. So you can pretty safe. It's pretty safe to assume that as long as you are doing your rotation properly, then this effect will always take into acceleration when you're doing your damage. But however, since we already have elemental mastery on the weapon for our artifact section, I will actually not use a elemental mastery hourglass. Instead, I'll look for a attack percent hourglass. Now for the sub stat, of course you can have elemental mastery, but make sure you also have crit damage and your critical rate as well. That's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed learning a thing or two, especially about building artifact for your sub DPS. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe below, and I'll see you guys next time.